so you want to learn how to work the steam table. I'm Angela. And I'm Matt. And today we're going to show you the many ways of Skyline Chili. Skyline's a great place to work, right Angela? Yeah, once you know your way around. Hey Angela, did you know that Skyline sells over 8 million ways a year? Wow, it sounds like we ought to get started showing you the Skyline way. Here's Mary. She's just starting her shift. Where do you think she's headed? Well, I know something about Mary. She's heading to the first place we all go after clocking in, the hand sink. Before beginning any food preparation, employees must always wash and sanitize their hands. At Skyline, we're really committed to serving customers safe food. The bacteria and germs on your hands can cause people to get sick. So wash and sanitize. Just do it. Look, it's almost Skyline time. Let's see what Mary's doing to make sure the rush goes smoothly. First things first. She's bringing out a bucket of fresh sanitizer water and clean towels. Since we make the food right before the customer's eyes, we need to keep the area clean and sanitized. Next, she stocks clean dishes on both sides of the table and makes sure carryout containers are within arm's reach. Then, Mary double checks that all the food is ready and in its proper place on the table. Onions, cheese, chili, Spaghetti and beans should be stocked and ready for making ways. Be certain that you have the proper utensils in each product. An 8-ounce chili ladle, spaghetti forks, a bean spoon, a 6-ounce ladle, and iced teaspoons in the onions. During slow periods, cover the cheese, chili crocks, and spaghetti crocks with lids to maintain quality and temperature. We don't cover the beans because that would make them mushy. Hey, it looks like we're about ready. But don't forget about stocking backer products so that we don't have to leave the steam table area during the rush. Yeah, that would lead to some major stress. Stock backup pans of cheese and onions in the nearest region. And let's not forget about backup pans of spaghetti. Make sure they're three quarters full and covered before placing them in the region closest to the steamer. And check that there is backup spaghetti in the steamer when you're expecting a rush. Just a few more things. Since cheese tends to clump during storage, Fluff it when you bring it to the steam table. And speaking of cheese, now that your stock work is done, want to practice some Michael Jordans? Practicing his technique and accuracy made Michael Jordan a legend. Practicing your technique and accuracy with cheese will make your product the skyline legend that it is. If it worked for Michael Jordan, it'll work for us. Practice makes perfect. And now for a recap. To get ready for a rush, you need to... Bring sanitizer water, stock dishes, stock carryout containers, stock the steam table, place utensils, cover product, place backup product, fluff cheese, and practice, practice, practice. Got it? Good. And now for our feature presentation. A Skyline Chili three-way has spaghetti, but it's not Italian. It has chili, but it's not from Texas. It has cheese, but it's not Swiss. It is, however, served from China. Skyline Cincinnati-style chili. So here's how we make it taste so good. Matt? For dining in orders, pull a regular whey plate and hold it firmly as shown. Pick up the spaghetti fork so it lies across the fingers of your open hand. Place your thumb on the handle near the prongs. That'll give you better control when you portion the spaghetti. Using the fork, pull the hottest spaghetti from the underside of the product. Lift the spaghetti above the crock and position the plate under the spaghetti as shown. Notice, as I make my products, that I always keep my plate over the crock of the product that I'm portioning. Now, lower the fork to the center of the plate. Then, press firmly against the bottom of the plate and wiggle as you pull the fork straight off the edge of the plate. Use the back of the fork to spread the spaghetti so that it's full and level to the rim of the plate. And just scrape off any spaghetti hanging over the edge. Hangers gotta go if you want it to look neat. If you find yourself a little short on the spag, add some additional strands to fill in the bare spots. Now we're ready for some of that incredible Skyline chili. Hold the six ounce chili ladle down the handle like you hold a pencil. Not too far down or it gets real hot. Stir the product in a circular motion, bottom to top. Position the plate above the crock and lift a full ladle over the top of the plate. Dropping your wrist, ladle the chili down and away from you over the spaghetti. The faster you drop, the further it spreads. If any chili remains in the ladle, 
use it to touch up the bare spaghetti spots. We call that the drop wrist method. Well, we pros call it slinging chili. When finished, the chili should cover all spaghetti noodles except a thin edge at the rim. Now, place the plate up against the cheese pan and gently fluff the cheese. Using both hands, pick up an oval mound of cheese. And don't squeeze the cheese. Now for the finale. Carefully place the cheese oval on the product so it forms a dome, while leaving a thin edge of spaghetti and chili showing. Place the product directly onto a serving tray for immediate delivery to the guest. Hey, I can see it has three layers. Well, after all, it is a three-way. Remember the keys to making a perfect three-way. Use the hottest spaghetti, spread the spaghetti to rim level and edge to edge. Always stir the chili. Use a full ladle down to the last drop and top it with a dome of fluffed cheddar cheese. Three distinct layers of great taste. What about our customers with smaller appetites? How about a small three-way? Yeah, same great taste, less filling. The small three-way is made the same as the regular way. The key difference is that we use half as much. Now, as Angela makes a small three-way, see if you can point out what makes her technique so great. Okay, Angela, take it away. And away it goes. So, how did you do? Well, that small three-way certainly wouldn't be enough for you. You bet, Angela. I always eat the large. Why don't you show us your style? Really, Matt, it's not a lot different. Just a bigger portion on a bigger plate. Watch, I'll show you the difference. I use a large whey plate and spread the spaghetti slightly above the rim's edge. Take a closer look. Then, top it with an eight ounce ladle of chili. I go for full coverage with the drop wrist method and use what's left over for touch-ups. And then, I cover it with a larger oval of cheese. It's on its way, the large three-way. Mmm. Let's look at some other ways our customers eat their chili. How about the four-way? It's a three-way with the addition of diced onions or red beans. Notice we put the beans on the spaghetti, then add the chili. Be careful not to drag the ladle or you'll lose your beans. Here's how we add the onions. Hold the onion spoon with your thumb on the handle near the bottom. For a small four-way onion, dump one heaping spoonful on the chili. For a regular four-way, dump two heaping spoonfuls, one at each end. And for a large four-way, dump three heaping spoonfuls, one at each end and one in the middle. Spread the onions evenly over the chili using the back side of the spoon. This ensures that the customer gets the full flavor of the four-way onion in every bite. Finish by topping off with the ovals of cheddar cheese. Now, here's the scoop on how we add the beans. Start with a plate of spaghetti and add as follows. Hold the bean spoon slightly down the handle. When adding beans, always lift them from the crock and shake the spoon up and down to drain off the water. For a small four-way bean, use half a spoonful. For a regular, use a rounded spoonful. Notice how the beans are dumped in a sweeping motion away from you and how the back of your spoon is used to spread them evenly for taste in every bite. For a large, use a heaping spoon. Then finish topping with chili and cheese. 
What about our customers that like both bean and onion? If they want it with the works, we make our five-way. A five-way is made just like the four-way bean: spaghetti, bean, chili. Then we add onions using the one-two-three portioning method, and top it off with a mound of cheddar cheese. As always, place a finished product on a serving tray for immediate delivery to the customer. The five-way. We top it all the way. Let's see how much you learned. If you get an order for a four-way, would you top it with a bean or b onion? If you said onion, you were right. We always assume a four-way is topped with onion unless the server calls or the screen says bean. A small way contains what portion of a regular way? A half the amount. B three quarters of the amount. The correct answer is A. A small way contains half the amount of each ingredient in a regular way. The one, two, three portioning method relates to A. How you put finished product on a tray. B. How you portion beans for small, regular, and large ways. C. How you portion onions for small, regular, and large ways. And the right answer is C. Remembering how to portion onions is as easy as one, two, three. One heaping spoonful for a small, two for a regular, and three for a large. Now for the final question: When portioning spaghetti, you should use the hottest spaghetti and spread it on the plate. A. Edge to edge. B. Rim to rim. C. Level. Gotcha. The answer is A, B, and C. You should always spread spaghetti level, edge to edge, and rim to rim. So, are you finding your way around? Let's go on and take a look at some variations to our standard three, four, and five ways. You know, Angela, sometimes our customers want us to hold the cheese. For them, we serve up our chili and spaghetti dish. It's slightly heavier on the spaghetti so that it's filling. Tell us how to do it, Matt. Start with a regular plate of spaghetti. Portion a bit heavier, making it a slightly rounded plateful. Then cover it with a ladle of our secret recipe chili. And if the customer requests, add onions, beans, or both. That looks like a filling dish without the cheese. Say, Matt, I wonder how our servers respond to so many special requests. At Skyline, we do whatever it takes to give the customers what they want. So, quite simply, the answer is yes. What's the question? With that in mind, can you tell us how to make it juicy? Yes, absolutely. Start with a plate of portioned spaghetti. Lift the ladle without stirring the chili. Then skim the top until you get a full ladle of mostly juice. Next, outline the spaghetti around the edge of the plate using about three quarters of the ladle. Use what's left over to cover the remaining noodles. Place on a liner and finish topping. The juicy way, more of the tasty juices. Looks like this dish should always be served with a bib. What about customers who love the great taste of our chili but with less of the juices? They would ask for a dry, of course. This is how you make the dry way. Prepare the product as usual, up to and including the chili. Use one of the following procedures to drain the juices. Place the plate at an angle in a chili bowl. While the juices drain, continue making other products, or poke the product several times with a fork so that the juices drain to the bottom of the plate. Then use the fork to lift the spaghetti at one end and tilt the plate so that the juices drain back into the crock. Make sure you take your time to drain thoroughly, just the way the customer wants it. After the juices have drained, use the fork to move the product back in place. If you use the bowl method for draining. Lift the plate and shift ingredients back into place. Pour the juices immediately back into the chili crock and place the bowl in a bus tub. Finish topping as requested. Some folks just can't get enough of our great tasting chili. For them, extra chili is the way to go. So how do you add extra chili to any of our way products? To add extra chili, we first prepare it the same way as a dry, draining off the juices. Then. No matter which size we're making, we add four more ounces of chili and place the product on a liner. Finish topping, and off it goes. Matt, 
Did your mom ever talk to you about putting the cart before the horse? Yeah, that's when you do last things first. Well then, you should be able to explain the inverted. An inverted way is simply putting the cheese before the chili. Watch as Angela makes a three-way and a five-way inverted. Start with a plate of spaghetti. For the five-way, add beans. Then add the full correct portion of cheese, spreading it so it covers all the spaghetti and is level. Then stir and carefully ladle the chili, covering all of the cheese. Top with onions and place on a liner. Finish off the three-way with a full ladle of chili and place on a liner. Our inverted way, no matter if it's a three-way, a four-way, or a five-way, top it in the usual order except put the cheese before the chili. Sometimes, Matt, you just can't get enough of a good thing, and other times you get too much of a good thing. That's why we offer light and heavy portions. Tell us, Angela, what do we do for customers who want a little more or a little less of their favorite ingredient? As always, Matt, the answer is yes. For light, we use half of the ingredient amount, and for heavy, one and a half times the amount. Let's take a look at light and heavy on our regular size ways. For light spaghetti, fill the plate with half the amount. For heavy spaghetti, fill a regular plate, then add half a portion more spaghetti. For light beans, add a half a spoonful, spreading evenly with the back of the spoon. For heavy beans, use one and a half the amount, or a heaping spoonful. For light onion, use one heaping spoon and spread evenly. For heavy onion, use three heaping spoons and spread evenly across the product. For the cheese lover, or onion lover, we offer sides. For a side of onion, scoop three heaping spoons into a cracker bowl. This should fill the bowl halfway. For a side of cheese, Fluff the cheese with one hand and portion a small dome into a cracker bowl. As the name suggests, serve on the side. Okay, so far for training purposes, we've shown you how to prepare one product at a time. But during the rush, combining orders and making multiple ways together can be a real juggling act. Here's Skyline time in the fast lane. Start by pulling plates for the product ordered. In this case, we'll make three three ways. First, Spaghetti all three plates. Notice, same product, same portion. Consistency in size and taste is what our customers expect. Hot spaghetti, full and level, rim to rim. Remember to scrape off any hangers. Then, chili all three products. Stir first. For that great chili taste, use a full ladle and empty every drop. Use the drop wrist method. Faster drop, better coverage. Touch up the bare spot. Finally, cheese all three products. Fluff first and place oval mounds on the product. Remember, the customer sizes up our product visit to visit. Consistency does count. Move to a serving tray for immediate delivery. Hot, fast, delicious, the Skyline way. A lot of our customers are on the run. They pick up food to eat in their cars, at the office, or back at home. Angela, show them how we package it for the folks on the go. Ways for to-go orders are made as chili spaghetti or chili spaghetti bean. Since cheese and onions are packed separately for the guests to add later, we'll take a look at a small and regular chili spaghetti and a large chili spaghetti bean, all packaged to go. For a small chili spaghetti, fill a half pint container three quarters full of spaghetti. For a regular chili spaghetti, portion spaghetti to cover the fill line. Make certain to get good edge-to-edge -edge coverage. Scrape off any hanging spaghetti using the back of the fork. For a large chili spaghetti, do the same. Notice the lid is always placed underneath the carryout container before adding product. The container can get really hot, so this keeps you from getting burned. Then stir chili and portion as follows. For a small, use half a six ounce ladle. For a regular, use a full six ounce ladle. And for a large chili spaghetti bean, Portion a heaping spoonful of beans onto the spaghetti and spread evenly. Then use a full 8 ounce ladle. Use the drop wrist method, covering all the spaghetti. Notice the finished product fills the container to the rim. Now cover, matching the tabs and then beginning at one end. Snap tightly, working your way around the container. 
take the finished product immediately to the drive-thru or carry-out for final packaging. So, do you think you're ready for the steam table? Let's take one last check. Before starting any food preparation, you must A. Stock backup products B. Wash and sanitize your hands C. Check the temperature of all food If you didn't get this one, you'd better head straight to the hand sink. The answer is B. Remember, just do it. Which of the following should be done to get ready for the rush? A. Stock clean dishes and carryout containers B. Make sure all product is stocked and ready at the table. C. Stock back a product in nearby coolers. I hope you agree that it's all three. Being prepared eliminates major stress. During slower periods, which of the following items should not be covered on the steam table? A. Spaghetti B. Beans or C. Chili Okay, good guess. The correct answer is B. No mushy beans on our ways. Ladling chili, you should A. Always stir first B. Use a full ladle and the drop wrist method C. Use any leftover in the ladle to touch up bare spots Well, that was a trick question. The answer is all three, except that you don't stir first on a juicy. When cheesing ways, which is correct? A. Gently fluff the cheese B. Use oval domes covering all but a thin edge of the product C. Cover the entire product so that no layers are visible. The answer is A and B. C couldn't be correct because a finished product should reveal all its layers. Once a product is finished, it should be placed immediately onto a serving tray. Then A. Set aside until the server can get to it. B. Served immediately to the customer by any available server. Or C served immediately to the customer by any available employee. Everybody likes hot food hot, and that's why the correct answer is C. It's everyone's job to get food off the steam table and to the customer, like now. Working the steam table at Skyline should be A, a cool place to be seen, B, a nice break from home, or C, an awesome way to make money. Take your pick. We want you to make great food for our customers and have fun doing it. So now you know the many ways of Skyline. You know what it takes to make good food. But what would really make it Skyline time is your personal pride and caring enough to make a difference with every customer. Practice. Have fun. And in the next few shifts, with the help of your training coach, you'll come a long way toward becoming a production pro on the steam table. Please, please, please.